Hello, everybody. I just want to say, if you guys want to introduce yourselves, uh, Dom uh, over there, he's nice, he's got a nice little uh, cloak on. Dom, uh, why don't you introduce yourself first? I mean, at the end of the day, if you watched episode one, we all know who I am at this point, Bruno. There's no need for an introduction. Okay, for those that didn't watch episode one, so Dom is very new to this stuff, so he doesn't know how this works. Uh, so there could be people that are watching episode two, which is this one right here for the very first time. Dom, just say your name, man. Why are you going to make things more difficult than okay, it needs to be? Okay, okay. Just introduce My name's yourself. Dominic. Let's pass. Hamilton, this is Dominic. Ontario. No reason to get to know who Five he is. doesn't six. matter. My name is Bruno. I was Alan on Big Stallion. Brother season three and season five. Uh, and I love to break down these things. I live stream on Kick and Twitch, and I do this stuff every single day. Uh, we have a lovely guest tonight. We have Mel. A hey, Mel, please tell us about yourself. Uh, let's let's hear about it. Wait, wait, wait. Mel, introduce yourself. I'm Mel A. Melissa Alder. Um, I was on Traders season one. I was labeled, or my role was a faithful. Um, I live in London, Ontario. A teacher and I'm a mom and I do a lot of things in the community. Just busy, but it's doing well. Oh yeah, and I'm a breast cancer thriver, so I'm proud of that. Four years amazing. now. So. Awesome. Ama absolutely yes. amazing. I love absolutely amazing. That's a good intro, Dom. You have a lot to learn. This guy. <laughs> See how she comes in, bum bum bum. Dom's like, if you watch episode, like like, why do you make things difficult for? Anyway, moving on. Okay, so. This is episode two, and Mel, uh, a big shout out. That was awesome, and, and congrats again. That's that's amazing. That's very very good news. Love to hear that. Um, Thank you. Okay, we're gonna break down episode two. We did episode one. Dom and I we're on episode two now, and we have the lovely Mel A with us. Like she said, mm -hmm. we're on Trader season one. Um, first things first. What do you think of the cast, Mel? What do you think of the cast? I think the cast is interesting. I think there are huge personalities in this show for sure. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's interesting that already the paranoia, um, the emotion, um, people wear their heart on their sleeves already. So I, I think this cast is phenomenal. I, I think it's, it's really good. It's, there's a drama already. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think they're doing a good job. I'm yeah, proud of them. I agree. And I think uh, I was, we were watching the episode together on the stream and, uh, yeah. we were saying like, I, for me, the, the episode, this is episode two. And the comp that was designed for this for this episode, I think for a viewer, it's very early because it's all by their names. And and, and let's be honest, we don't know who these people are. I don't know who their names are. Half of them I haven't even seen on the TV yet. Mm -hmm. But for the players, I feel like it's a very, very good comp because it brings that drama and distrust already within the group because now they're starting to copy, oh, this, is, this person's the most untrustworthy or this person's this or that or whatever it is. So I feel for the players, it really you know, scrambles things up and, and gets them pointing in the wrong direction. But for the viewers, I don't know who these people are. So there's such a big disconnect as a viewer. Um, what are your thoughts on the comp and uh, what, what did you think of it? What did you think about the traders giving the answers and all that stuff? Uh, Mel, we'll go. You want ahead. me to go? Yeah, we'll go with Mel. Dom needs a little time out for okay. a minute when he gets ready to, okay. to reel so in a little the, bit. The, so we're talking about the Trojan Horse Challenge? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, that challenge looked brutal. Um, but I feel like that right away, the traders, I mean, the traders, the faithful, um, they weren't communicating. Uh, they were just, like, rushing. And even when they were pulling, they could have had those conversations. But I feel like the strategy right there is, like, you had Michael John. The first one, he's a strong guy, the first one to basically answer the questions. I would think that you would get the people who are, because remember, it's either, you know, you have the strength, you have the brains, and there's puzzles and all that. Everybody has their strengths, right? So I would have thought that he would be at towards the end, pulling when the, the, when the Trojan horse is a lot heavier with the mm -hmm. sandbags. So I thought it was kind of weird that he was the first one just to go up. I think it should have been like some of, you know, some people who are just don't have that physical strength, right. like Mike or whoever, because Mike even mentioned that in the show. So right there um there was a lot of assumptions is this really interesting where um i laughed at the part where uh they thought cedric was um was shouting or yelling and, and so on and he all he was if you're like for teams or whatever it was chaotic you can see but you can see him trying to like get people together to see which mike which one asking questions mm -hmm. so it wasn't like he was telling people what to do in a sense he was asking questions about okay which mike which, what are we talking about right and then it was just, inter I think it was Rebecca was saying like, um, like shouting or other people saying shouting. So it's just really interesting when they're in that chaos. It's, it happened to me too, right, Dominic? Remember? I was like trying to show, trying to like talking to me, like what's going on and trying to have that conversation. So 
is it really interesting in the heat of the moment because it was hot and obviously they were like yeah yeah it was hot it looked like a hot day and just you know the sweat and the tears and the frustration so I totally know how all those emotions because that happened with us in season one with the plane challenge and the puzzle so I, I totally understand plane the frustration challenge, Dom Dom brings up like, I had a, an issue there uh Dom what are your thoughts on are you you okay Dom you're back you ready I mean I mean did Mike volunteer himself or was he chosen to go up to answer the question first? That part I didn't catch, but uh, from my standpoint, for him to put himself up there to go answer the question first was probably more likely that he wanted to get himself out of the herd um, to pretty much, you know, hide in the background, not have to say too much and just hide. I feel like from a standpoint of me watching mm -hmm. him this episode, he, I feel like he's hiding now. I feel like he feels like Maybe he's getting caught on to uh, being a traitor and he's trying to do everything in his power to kind of diminish his name out of people's mouths. And you know what? The guy that actually uh, called him out, Mike there, he's an investigator, journalist on mm -hmm. the podcast. And I feel right. like he's actually analyzing the game for what it is, where a lot of people are pretty much doing the same thing from season one. Like who's we all want to stick around who's going to be the first person to go, who's making themselves shine bright, and let's all go with them so that way the we can stick around longer. Yeah, and that's right. kind of the way it's played. And, like, I mean, Cedric, to me at this point, is resembling Donna. You know, he's, oh. putting, him to, he's putting himself up there to the point where, like, now the, the light's being shined on him, and it might help him out in the long run as much as it mm -hmm. did Donna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, was, but I, don't, I, I disagree with you because I think the, the situation with Donna and Colin was a more like he said, she said, and so on, where Cedric is saying what he said and who he said it to. And you know what? He's like, ask even at the round table. He says, did I say that? So I felt that he was like, you know, he was taking accountability of what he said in front and not whispering and going to this person and doing the whole, you know, telephone game and so on. So I felt like more or less, I don't think it was more like a Donna in, I don't know, we're comparing our situations, whatever, but I felt like it was just more, I think it was a combination of like Rick Capanelli, I feel like a little bit of Kevin, I feel like a little bit of Fierce, but I feel like he just, he's a strong player, but I feel like now he just needs to hone in and observe more. Like, that would be my advice, is not to talk so much, because like, that was a conversation I had with Kevin. When people talk so much, they're not going to be traitors is they don't want to put their foot in their mouths, right? But it's really interesting that Kira is talking quite a bit. So it's interesting about her because she's talking way more as a traitor. She's doing a good job, but I'm worried that she may say the wrong thing or somebody might pick up on something. Now, That's just me. Now, speaking of, I have two, two follow-up questions with that because you brought up Kira and how she's doing and she's very vocal. Um, but I, before I go to that, I want to talk uh, with the Cedric thing. Do you think people are going to hard clear him now because of the way he is? And they're like, this guy, he just seems so innocent. Like he's just, or do you think they're just like, he's crazy. Let's keep, let's, let's get rid of him. What, what do you think their so reactions to Cedric is? So that, that, that's, that's kind of where I was getting with my point. Like the same thing kind of almost, yeah, I get your point of view where he's actually playing the game a lot more. You know, he has bullet points to what he's stating, but I feel like the fact that he's put himself out there on this mm -hmm. episode or the episode previously is right. almost similar to Donna. Yes, it's different, but mm -hmm. I feel like it is going to help him in the long the run. highlight, the spotlight. That's the only thing that I'm saying that has resembled oh. the situation. Mm -hmm. Not so mm -hmm. much they're playing, but mm -hmm. the people are going to be like, okay, yeah, maybe they'll grasp it. Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's what I'm yeah. trying to almost get at with, with the whole Donna situation. Yeah. Right? The way I look it helped at her get far. The way I look at like yeah. Cedric, if I'm a traitor, I'm gonna keep Cedric to the end. This guy's so chaotic. He's he's just he's out there caught, he, not even on purpose, but it's like he keeps throwing grenades in there and scrambling the game and getting people confused. The more the more he confuses them, the less I would have to. So I would keep Cedric as my tool to keep people confused and keep him in the game. He's lost. His scent is just wrong all the time, and that's who you want to keep in. You you don't want to you, you want to get rid of the detectives, the people that are out there trying to actually piece it together and are smart and figuring it out. The mics, the people like that that are actually doing the stuff. But Cedric is so chaotic and just causing problems, and people don't trust them. I'd keep him in as a, as a traitor personally uh, myself. But I do want to touch on that point you said with uh, with Kira. Uh, she's very vocal, yet she's a traitor. Now I don't know if. 
what did you think about the way she talked at breakfast? At breakfast, she comes in um, and she was, she was. I mean, from what we saw as a viewer, what, what did it really happen that way? Maybe, maybe not. But she was very, very vocal at the breakfast. Do you think she's talking too much? Do you think she's she's doing too much, or do you think she should reel it back? Do you think it's just right? Like, what do you think from people? Because by the way, you both have been there, so you know what it's like to be at breakfast. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's doing too much at breakfast, or it's just it is what it is? What do you guys think, uh, Mel? Let's go, Mel. With you. Mel. I said it in episode one. I get this vibe like Kira's Melissa B. Okay, I got to stop you right there. Dom thinks, I'm going to tell you right now, Mel. Dom thinks everybody's a mirror of someone from your season. No, I don't. Right I'm just getting resemblances. I'm going to say this right now. This is a, very, a completely new cast. They're not like, this is the Dom. This is the Mel A. This is the Mel B. <laughs> this is the Michael. This, it doesn't work Give that way, Give them their Dom. own identity. Thank Give you. Them their Get own that out of your head. You've done this Give every time I talk. Okay. Like, this is the, okay. okay. This I'm is sorry, a sweetheart. totally new cast. Nobody resembles anybody. It's These are them. That is you, okay? So go on, Dom, <laughs> before we get out. Because this is going to be the rest of the show is, well, this is this person, and they no, did no, this, no, so I'm they're going to do this. It doesn't I'm work that way. So, Dom. Melissa's point of view on what she do towards her, right? Like, I mean, for us to examine it, and considering we've been there, making resemblances with other players is almost us getting a better understanding as to how they're playing the game. I feel like she's, she's a little bit too vocal for me. And eventually, mm -hmm. I mentioned in episode one that her and uh, Netta are going to have a feud where... Yes, Mike be, might be the first one out, but it'll, it'll be between them two next. I'm getting a vibe that these three traders might not necessarily work as good oh, together they're not gonna work. as they're they not thought. Working. They're not going to work. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's going to be more it's already not working with the traders than than last season for sure. Mm -hmm. So Mel, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're if you're familiar with this, but I played Big Brother with Netta, so we were on the same okay. season together on season five. So okay. I already have an inside of how Netta's brain works, how her mind works, okay? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the second they, so I knew, well, once we saw that it was Netta and Kira as the traders, and then they brought that Michael guy in, just the way she reacted when he pulled off his cloak, the words that came out of her mouth, the little laugh she did, I was like, this guy's crazy. Rattle. I know how Netta plays and I knew exactly what was going through her head when his cloak unreal. And I'm like, this guy's cooked. He's done. He's finished. She, this guy's oh, yeah, food yeah. to her. And a hundred percent, that's what's going to happen. So, the two, I mean, I mean, what do I know? But the two girls, um, and Mike, it's just not going to work. The Michael and these two girls is not going to work. Um, and I'm here for it. I just, I, I think Michael's been way over his head. Um, but again, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. I just wanted to give you a little backstory of Netta and I. So I, yeah, I no, played yeah. with her. So I know. I mean, obviously, it's a very different game. Traders and Big Brother is Netta's very different. observant. I can see already she's observant, yes. right? And she's very calculated, yeah. right? So the fact that she, I, I know when she chuckled and then when she mentioned, you know, with her one-on-one -on -one in the interview, right away, she's also saying, like, what she's noticed and then how it's going to even impact her game. So, and then even at the end, the conversations they had, is just interesting that she's trying to see, you can see her observing Kira, Kira and Michael John. You can see her kind of seeing the navigate, the, the strengths as well about who to you have to pick a side right because those two are battling it out and she's holding back but you know what we know that she really doesn't want to get rid of gail so yeah yeah and i see what you're saying very very smart player um i always right. you know give credit where it's due she is a very good player very smart at these games she understands the social side of it the strategic side uh i'm super excited now again it's a very different game than big brother i don't know if it's going to translate completely but you nailed mm -hmm. it. She's very observant, and she knows when and how to strike, and, and she did a really good job. So tell me, what, what's it really like at breakfast? You talked about Kira a little bit. She was a little vocal at the breakfast. What is breakfast actually like? When you Give us your take on it. Like, when you were there, you come in. What are you, what are you looking for? Are you looking for clues? You know, who comes in the door at what order? What are you looking at for? Amel, let's start with you. First thing, I was, I was always looking for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good, because I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I need a little coffee. Um, but I, it, it's like, you know what, you're just, it's a combination of both. It's like, you're observing people who are coming through the door, but you're also, you also can try to be calculated where you sit, because if there are some people that you do not really connect, you kind of sit further away. So other opportunities to, um, for other people to come sit beside you. So everybody's kind of like, so the seating spot, seating areas, is kind of calculated where you now, want to sit with. Do you pick um, where you sit or they, they. You pick yeah, you get to pick okay. whoever right. first come, first serve. So a lot of times, I think within our season, we didn't go like one, two, three, four. We were all like kind of like spread out. 
And then it's kind of like, and it's also an opportunity to connect with people who you do know that you do trust or you do have suspicion of, or people that you also want to build rapport with just to get to know them. Because again, if you're too reserved, people that's already, you know, you become a sus suspect for any type of human interaction or any human, you know, um, emotion or what have you. So I think of the breakfast is a combination of having those conversations, how to basically seek observing people and then also piecing what other people have observed. So basically you're getting, you're collecting all the breadcrumbs, you're collecting all the ideas. And I think that's basically the purpose of, you know, breakfast. Now, how long is it between like group one, group two, group three? Is it like five minutes, 20 minutes, no, 40 minutes? 20 minutes, half hour. Yeah, it's, it's, hmm? a, it's a time. 20 minutes, half hour. I mean, yeah, my, it take, my take <laughs> compared to Melissa's is totally different. I was happy to still be alive, walk through the door. And more than likely, 90% of the time, I was always one of the last ones coming in. So I just took the closest seat because that room's so small. Right. You, it's hard to navigate in there, right? So mm -hmm. your your point of view from mine was different. I was happy to be there and I was happy to have a seat. That was pretty much it. See, other than that, mm -hmm. see, that's, and this other than that, how you're really going to grasp through those breakfast things, really. See, I like, you know, I like right. how you both have different views on it. Mel was looking at it more right. like strategically, like, hey, listen, man, we got to sit in the right. Dom's like, yo, I'm just going to take the first seat I see. I want a bagel. I want a muffin. I'm ready. You know, Mel's like, yo, we're playing a games. game there here. Dom's right. like, yo, man, let's, what's going on here? You know, where's the – I love it. I love it. So, uh, but no, it's good. That's, that's the way it is. You got to this, – this game doesn't stop. Uh, I love that. I didn't know – I didn't realize how much time was in between. Uh, is it mm -hmm. 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes? Because, you know, just like an, on, on, you know, on other shows – it's not what you see on TV. It's very, very, very different. So, and I didn't want to sit beside the same people, anyways, too, right? Because again, you don't want to have like a click or what have you. So you want to look like you're playing your own game, and that you're also connecting with other people. So, yeah. So I didn't. Then, want to, I didn't. I never sat beside the same person. And no, then right? just to like yeah. go on top of my point, like you're you're sitting in your room, you know, and they're like, "We're gonna come get you at 7 a.m." And sometimes by the time they come get you, it's 10 a.m. So mm -hmm. like. At that point in time, if you go downstairs by yourself or you turn the corner and you see it with other people, you right. know, by the time this all perspires and you get to that point where you actually go in the room and you know you're not getting murdered, yeah, like, it's kind of draining. So, like, for me, when I got in there, first seat, relaxed. They never had any food I liked, that's for sure. I never ate. Probably lost about five pounds. It wasn't really breakfast. It wasn't breakfast. No. Stop. No. If so. I can play with production, tell them I want better bagels next time. Oh, oh, she knows. I complain. Don't worry. Yeah, but that you know what? I'll tell you though. That that is showbiz, man. Uh, hurry up and wait. Um, that's that's hurry up and wait. Yeah, hundred percent. Reality TV. That's how it is. Even uh, like I'll give you guys a little example. Big Brother Eviction Night is one hour long on TV. It's an all day thing. You're sitting on a couch for four or five hours. You're literally sitting oh. there on the couch. Yeah, yeah. But okay. you only see. That's 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 it's that's showbiz. It's hurry up and wait. That's okay. uh, the way it is. Okay, uh, I want to talk about uh, Chris. This guy was the first to get murdered. I mean, I already kind of forgot about the guy. Yeah. Uh, I forgot it even happened. He volunteered to be one of five people to be whatever in something. Why do that? Like, to be death row, death row, death row. Yeah. What's what's the pros and cons to volunteer to go on death row? Let's hear it. Because I, I personally don't see any. Um, they're looking for volunteers to go up. And they know it's a, one of those five people are going to be murdered. If, if there's 15 of us here, that's somebody else's problem. You're, you're going to have to drag me to be one of those five people because there's no way exactly. I'm, I'm picking myself ever. We'd be still standing there today, and I wouldn't say it. Like, there's not a chance I would ever volunteer myself to be one of five people evicted. This is a game of survival. Why put yourself in that situation? Uh, Dom, let's start with you, man. What, what, what do you think? Would you go and volunteer? What are the pros? What are the cons? I mean, I, I mentioned it briefly on episode one. I myself wouldn't vol volunteer. That being said, just from the way that Chris had his exit interview, he probably felt he was well-liked and not like somebody who was well-talked about in a negative manner. So to him, he's thinking to himself, okay, if I put myself up there, I'm going to gain mm -hmm. some brownie points with the other faithfuls. It's a one in five chance. And considering some of the others are more of a target than myself, for instance, right. Dylan, because he's talked about significantly. And I guess at the end of the day, the traders elected to go with something that was a lot more subtle. And it was surprising to him as well as, you know, everybody else. So he probably thought, you know what? I got a good rapport with everybody here. I'm going to take a chance. It's one in five shot. That's 20%. But why Did he make a mistake? Obviously, he did on his exit interview. He, he 
pretty much came on board and said, you know what, I guess my idea didn't work. So he probably had a point of view in which he thought he was doing good to help better himself as a faithful, but it, it backfired on him and it was it was evident in you the exit was, interview. It was evident he made a mistake. What's better than a one in five chance is a zero in five chance. Twenty percent is too high. One percent is too high. Zero percent is exactly the number you're looking for. Uh, it's never. It doesn't matter. Just you can't volunteer to maybe make a good rapport no. with other faithfuls. Like just a chance no. that they'll trust you more. Like that makes no sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. Buddy was brutal, brutal to do that. It's just, it just it, it makes no sense to go through this whole pro process and finally get on the show. Your night one, they're like, we need volunteers, and, and you, it makes no sense to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Never will. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. What are your thoughts on Chris Mel? Um, what are your thoughts? I, on say, him? I felt, I felt bad for him. I felt like he had a heart of gold. I felt like he, he had good intentions, and you know, and he had that empathy. And he wanted to be a team player, but with this game, you can't really be a team player. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is unfortunate because I definitely wouldn't want to put myself in that situation because I was on death row and I didn't even volunteer myself and I didn't even like it. So I felt like everybody knew that somebody is going to be, you know, murdered. You're volunteering like one out of five chances. But then the interesting fact, though, is that now we're in episode two. No one's talking about Chris. Yeah. Like no one, no one recalls about him sacrificing for them to get the 10 grand. It's on to the next one, on to the next one. So I think this is where the game is, is that you can't basically help other people in a sense if it's not going to help your game. You help other people if it's going to benefit you, and this did not benefit him. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and I like Dylan's strategy where he said, because he volunteered, but then he was trying to, like, talk a little bit to kind of look, you know, a little messy. So I can see that strategy, what he did, is to kind of, like, stray away for people to consider him being a traitor or what have you. But anyways... Um, yeah, it's, it's sad. It's unfortunate for Chris. It'd be interesting to see what he thinks, but I can see he had, you know, based on his, his decision, I felt like, again, he was just trying to be a team player. And I think this game, you can't do that. So, I, you know, love the unfortunate. team player. He team loves team players. No, no, I don't. Dom's a team player. And I tell him all the time that you can't play. I try to teach Dom that you cannot play this game like that. And he thinks he's, he's convinced that it's a team game. He's fucking convinced. And I try to explain to him every day, like, dude, that's not how you play this game. So, Mel, you're a breath of fresh air. I love talking to you about this because we see this game very similar. Dom and I, I couldn't see it as far different as Dom does. Like, we are completely <laughs> opposite on how we see this game. And it, this is so refreshing to, to be able to have this conversation. So, thank you uh, so much for this. So, um, Hanuk sniffs out Kira. Um, do you think he's like, oh, like, what yes. do we think of that? Yeah, because he mentioned I he mentioned it, it twice. He mentioned it on episode one. It, now that one, it could have been, you know, I, I, he kind of said, "Oh, you'd be a good trader or something like that." But I mean, whatever. Th but this one here, he literally talked to somebody else about it and said, "Hey, you know, Kira, I'm I'm kind of onto her." Uh, Mel, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think his name is pronounced Hinock. Hin uh, sorry, I how think that's. I think it's not Hinek. I think it's Hinock. I think Hinoch, that's how you sorry, pronounce it. Yeah, Hinock. Yeah, sorry. No. Yeah. I think no, because I paid attention where they were saying in the thing Hinek and whatever. But I think it's Hinek, but someone will correct us afterwards. But um, I love the fact that he he said that, and I'm surprised he didn't want to put him. I'm surprised his name didn't come up when they're trying to figure out who to murder because she kind of even like because he said it right to her like, oh, I think you are, or you're not a good. Li he even made something made a comment saying, oh, um, you're not a good liar or something like that. I remember her, he said right. that in. in the in, in the car to Kira, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel he's going to play a good game, but I feel, and they're going to keep him longer because, again, they keep talking. I notice how they're being using strategy, keeping all, you know, the physical laborers kind of thing to, you know, help with the challenges. So they're be having the strategy with that. Um, but I don't know how long that's going to last for, right? So we'll see. But um, right. he's playing a good game. He's doing the balance talking, but then holding back. Talking and holding back, right? And, uh, yeah, and him being a football player as well. I like the fact that, too, with him being a football player as uh, from his career, from the Egronauts and whatever. And then I feel like when he even said that that challenge was hard for him, goes to show how ch challenging these challenges are. And then even, too, with Mike even saying, like, it was kind of – it was hard. And Gail being a uh, the wrestler. So it just shows the reality that these challenges are no, not a piece of cake. So – yeah. Anyways, I just want to shout out it to looked, those, those players. It, that thing looked pretty heavy. They looked kind of gassed at the end, uh, for sure. 
Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah, and he and he he looks like a strong guy for sure. And and I agree, I agree. Dom, what are your thoughts on him? I mean, we just got glimpses from the edited portion, so they gave us that little bit of fruit to have a taste. It was sweet, but I don't think he talked too much throughout the entire two days to be able to put himself as a target. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my opinion, they just gave us a glimpse where we thought it would go that direction. It probably was didn't hold strong enough uh, for her to be considered that it would be dangerous for her. Uh, and at this point in time, I mean, Michael's kind of done himself in whether uh, they murder someone that he doesn't want or he gets mm. voted out next episode. I think his time's coming, but I don't think enough was actually said or there was enough context throughout the entire two days to actually build a storyline behind that. I think it was just a quick thing and it just got left behind to be honest now here's the thing Henock is uh, i hope i'm pronouncing it right mentions how yes. um voting out cedric and, and and i agree with him i i completely agree with this this is how i see the game too if i'm a faithful and there's a chaotic player like cedric you know he's out there throwing stuff and he says listen let's just vote him out and if we're wrong eh, who cares we're wrong we're gonna pr- probably be wrong anyways but at least we're reeling in the people that are, are kind of like level-headed i don't want to say he's not but you know like the ones that are kind of calm about things um, being intentional yes you know because that's the thing this game it, it's the more chaos the worse it is for the faithfuls right the less chaos oh, yes. the better everyone's in control everyone's kind of doing their thing um and and here's the thing with this game let's be honest the chances of voting out a faithful or a traitor are very low it's it's all you're going off of nothing like there's i mean from what i see oh, you're, yeah. not, you're not going off of anything so i like that take and i agree with it it's like hey let's just vote out cedric if we're right awesome if we're wrong eh, whatever we move forward we're probably gonna be wrong anyway um again for two people that have been in there what are your thoughts on that if you were if you were in that situation you have a cedric in the house it's just chaotic kind of throwing. we did that already we did that we oh, did that in season one. There you go. So who was that one on season? That was which one was that one on season one? Who did you guys do that to on season one? That was our dear girl, Miss Fierce Delicious. Oh yes, yes, yes. Absolute chaos. That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that that's the play. I agree with that play. Just kind of if you're wrong, ah, eh, whatever. We move forward. We're more like like uh, you know leveled out or whatever you want. I don't know what you want to call it. You know, uh, it's not as chaotic. Um, if you get it right, bonus. Awesome. We got it right. So so I, I agree. Now. Now, here's the thing with uh, who was that brought Michael uh, Dom. So Michael here is a traitor. We know he's a traitor. The traitors are kind of having some issues with him. Uh, he had mm-hmm. two votes against him on the table. The investigator is the one that started sniffing him out a little bit and says, hey, listen, man, I see some things. And obviously this guy does it as a profession. So he's seeing some things um, that he, he realizes do you, what do you guys think is in the cards for Michael coming up? Do you think the traders are going to turn on him? Do you think they're going to keep him around if people start sussing him? What do you think is going to happen? How do you think? What do you think Mike's future holds um, in the next episode? Let's start with Dom on this one. I think, I think personally, I think they're just they're editing it the way to make us believe the way it's going to go. I think it's going to die out next episode. It will come back in the future, but not to the the current president of episode three. To be honest, in my opinion. They're making it seem like, oh, he's gone tomorrow and that's what's going to happen. I feel like there's going to be some drama stirred up amongst the faithfuls throughout the next uh, mission there. And it's going to kind of put him back in the weeds where he might survive another couple of rounds until Mike, if he lasts long enough, can start to give all the other faithfuls enough evidence to push the envelope to get him voted out. The problem with this show is, is if you see on the challenges, is they tend to cast a lot of people with type A personalities. And there's nobody that likes to listen. Everybody wants to be the leader. And that's what causes all the problems in this game for the faithfuls. That's, yeah, if that's people what these were shows are about. That's the entertainment side. I know. But you were saying yourself that, oh, like more on the level playing field or whatnot. The problem is, is these personalities. If people put their personalities aside and said, let's work together as a team, let's appoint someone to, you know, Dumb. point out some things then it would be a lot different you're in going my back opinion. to the team mentality dude i i get what you, i get what you're saying but what i'm saying is, is if you look at a lot of these these challenges the traders flip through because the personalities they don't work together as a team okay to be no. able to get the evidence to get them out all right so dom you look at this game as it's it's a team game and i tell you the time it's not a team game. so you're telling me say i'm a trader and i'm in your team and we're working together to vote out the traders and i'm in your team as a trader what, what's going to happen man i'm talking more or less uh, faithfuls okay but well, you don't faithful, know i'm a trader 
Faithfuls are technically as a team. Yeah, it's an individual game, but you got to work together to get to the final stand there at the fire as a team. Yeah, as so we're working together and I'm a traitor. But we're working together and I'm a traitor. Now what? You don't know I'm a traitor. That's, now what? Then that's the mistake that, you know, that essentially it's I would make, individual right? individual game. That's why you can't, you, you can't, like, group up as a team, man. That's why I see it, man. You can't. You group up as a team and you have some traitors in the mix. You're, you're just, you're, it's just your time is going to come whenever it comes. If you're working with a traitor, they're controlling the game without you knowing it, you know? It's but a, with, yeah, but the same token, too, is, is if you don't work with a team, and you don't have people seeing things the same way, you're never going to get the votes to go in your favor to be able to push the envelope for the next episode. I, the next I completely episode. understand what you're saying with the numbers. I get, I get that part. I get that part, but you, I, 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 I get it. Anyway, so let's go. Uh, okay, so there's a brother and sister in the house, okay? What are your thoughts on that, Mel? Brother and sister in the house, nobody knows. I need your take on this. I don't know. I don't know why they would do that, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I don't know why they put family members in this type of game. Then, then, then do I, I don't know. I just said, you might as well do a game where you have family of traitors. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like, um, like, I don't know. Cause that could also be, I don't know. Like either way, both of them are winning in a sense. Yeah. So, right. So, you know, like she could use her brother in a way and is her brother really going, let's just say her, her, um, Nick, Nick, his name. If Nick realizes his sister is a traitor, wouldn't he want to support her for a while and let her win? Hundred percent. Hundred. Like they're I, playing... I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, that's what I would do. If, my, if I saw my baby sister and then and I know she's a traitor, I would just be working alongside her and that way let people know and help her get to the end. And I know I know I'm gonna get a little bit of money. I'm sorry. I'm gonna help this family. Family first. I've said the exact same thing. I feel the exact same way. Basically, how this works is. You have a brother and sister in the house, okay, working together. Yeah. If you like it or not, that's the way it is, okay. It is and what it is. It is they, what it is. They both know they're in the house together, and and exactly, they, they know, okay. If I'm in this house or I'm going on this show, I'm gonna tell my brother, my sister, whatever it is. Listen, I'm gonna get. They're gonna come up with some whatever it is, some kind of uh, codes or whatever it is to say yes, I'm a traitor. No, I'm not a traitor. Uh, mm -hmm. If this person's a traitor, that person's a traitor. If I'm sitting in a room, say me and you, we're, we're brother and sister, okay, Mel? And we're in a yeah. room with Dom. I'm a traitor, you're not. And I'm in a room, and I have a code that you know, you know, and I'm sitting in a room, us three, to tell you that Dom is my traitor partner. Now, the, right. the production will never pick up on it. Dom will never pick up on it. But you and I know this code. Now, we know that, okay, I'm a traitor. Dom's a traitor with me. Now we can openly talk. Hey, you know, I like Dom or I don't like Dom. I think Dom is this, right? I, I mm -hmm. want to work with And now you know where I'm at and yes. I know where you're at and we can move forward. And I think it's so unfair to have your brother or sister in the in the yes. house with you. The other and, thing is. And there's, an, sorry, there's, no, no. there's another piece to that. No, I love what you're saying. There's another piece to that is that afterwards, she can also protect Nick. If the traders start to suspect Nick and say, yep. you know what? Nick was acting funny and so on. She could deflect and say, no, 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 no. So again, she also, if they're both have protectors, right? So I don't know. I agree. And we talked part, about, right? we talked about if he lasts long enough, he's potentially going to get recruited. A hundred percent. So Think about it. So say, let's just say, let's just say, okay. Netta and I would do that. Kira I would do that. vote out Michael. Let's just say Netta and Kira vote out Michael. Okay. Now they can recruit another one. Michael's not in the running. Nobody thinks he's a traitor. Nobody's against him, whatever. I know it's a little bit early. It's only one episode, but we're just going to get there <laughs> for that. Okay. So let's say they, uh, they now, Kira says, hey, listen, nobody's, what's that? I don't even know what his name is. What's the brother's name? Nick. Nick. Oh, I was going to say Kevin. So, so Kira goes to, let's say Kira goes to, I did says, my hey. homework. I did my homework. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Mel did. knows. Mel's on fire. Dom, take notes. <laughs> Mel's killing it, man. Man. Yo, Mel, if you want to, you know, we can just get rid of Dom. We can go me and you. It's fine. Call me. Call yeah, me. Yeah, I got I'll, you. I got I'll you. I'll be his back. I'll just be. Dom's I'll be replaced. Dom doesn't teacher. know this I'll year. be the substitute teacher. Yeah, you I'm going it. for a cigarette. You got it. So. <laughs> You know, and then Kira can go to Netta and say, "Hey, listen, let's uh, let let's you know, let's recruit Nick." Netta not knowing that Nick is her brother, right? So then yeah. she recruits Nick in. You know, Netta thinks that you know. I'm just it's obviously all theory, and now it's Nick well, it's and, good, and Kira hold the numbers. They can vote out Netta. They can do whatever they want. They control who they kill. They control everything. Exactly. And they can run the traitor game. And it's just, it's such an unfair that. advantage. And I just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's too much of an advantage. Um, yeah. The way it like, is. Like, I feel like it's, I feel like it should just be, everybody should just be strangers. Unless they just have a game where everybody has a sibling. <laughs> 
yeah, or right. whatever, Either. then that would be an, everybody brings a sibling or some form of family member, then that would be an interesting to take this because some family members can't stand each other right. or whatever. <laughs> so it'll be, you, you just never know, right? That would be an interesting dynamic. But anyways, it is what it is. It's, I'll tell you, it's exactly, it is what it is. We got to accept a, that they went this route. I just, I just, I, I don't think it was needed. I think this, this cast no. is good enough as it is. I don't think that twist was needed. Else. Right. They couldn't find somebody else in Canada. Right, right, right. Exactly. I mean, I'm sorry. You, like know, you know how Dom, they pick, we need him back. You know how they pick the contestants. So, Dom needs a redemption story. I think. What do you think? No. I yeah. needed a redemption story, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's get Dom back in there. Don't do what you did again, though, Dom. Did you learn? Honestly, Mel knew I had her back. You okay, know what? Dom, we're not getting into this. Did you All learn right. your lesson? All right, whatever. Let's let's move on to the next topic then. Because clearly, it's not getting your bones going. So, Dom, listen. You guys are awesome. you guys are awesome. Okay, so what do you think of their choice for the traders? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Do you think they should have done something different? What's going on? Traders are traders. Yeah. <laughs> you I mean, they, they have no. They're going to play the rule. Uh, to me, to me, they pre-picked the traders once they see all the cast members. They definitely want Annette there from her previous experience. Michael gives that little bit of a haunting twist. Looks like he's not doing the best of jobs, so they might have made a mistake. And Kira's doing not too bad herself. Um, but I think she's... I, I honestly think her personality is going to get her screwed, to be honest. I think she's trying to make too many friends in there, become too close with people. And as you can see, when Rebecca went home, her emotions come out way too easy. So eventually it's going to get to her where she keeps sending out all her friends yeah. She's not going to be able to handle it anymore. Do you think, and this was yeah. episode, episode one was, for the Do you think Kira was laying it on a little thick, or do you think she was actually bawling her eyes out? Or maybe maybe it's a mix of both. What do you think? No, no, she was crying. I think she was crying. I feel like she she's happy that like no one no one got caught or Nick or her brother didn't get caught, but or you know got got banished. But I feel like she did have a rapport with with, with Rebecca, so I feel like that's like those are genuine tears, and I and you know like. Like my banishment was emotional, and I was like, I was tearing up with with Rebecca because it brought me back to like how you feel alienated because you don't. It feels like you don't have a voice because everybody's trying to find some way to diminish your voice or to suspect you. And then even when you're trying to articulate and try to give provide logic, it's just some people are just so irrational. But is it also a combination of just being irrational or also trying to protect their own asses as well, right? So it's a combination of both. But I was tearing up seeing Rebecca, you know what I mean? So kudos to her. Um, it's unfortunate. And, you know, and and she had those emotions only on the first and in, in, in round one table. It, it It's going to escalate. It's going to be emotions about. that are heightened. Now, I, I see got... you, girl. I see you, girl. I... Now, I want to say, I want to say this. How does it feel when all the the name like people are starting to look at you? You know your time's coming. No. People are talking about you at the round table. And there's nothing you can do about it. Like what what does that feel like when you know they're saying, "Hey, I think it's you." And like, what do you what, what do you do? What how do you defend yourself and be like, guys? Like, what can you say to say? What are you doing, man? Why are you listen, looking at me? Listen, listen. Even because everybody knows I I like to talk and so on. Like you know what you know. Like mm. Gerline mentioned. That being said, it was just where. It's sometimes you just know when to just fold them in a sense because I started to try to explain things and then people were just being irrational that I was too nice, um, that I was winking at them. I was like, even if like, what trader will wink at you, I'm basically suspecting Koozie and I'm winking at you because I don't want her to know whatever because she's observant. She has a, she's, a, she's a strong silent type until you put her in the corner, then she's going to attack. So I know that was her strategy. So is this really interesting that they're like, well, you winked at me, you winked at me. I was like, yeah, because I was trying to support you guys or trying to deflect. So is this really interesting? And I just, afterwards, when I just heard the um, irrational or thing, the, the logic, you can't, you can't, you can't argue with that. Like, honestly, because I'm just going to argue with myself. It and doesn't I'm get also nowhere scared. either. Hmm? It doesn't get nowhere either. Like, the, the mind's already made up. There's nothing you're going to exactly. do that's going to change it. Exactly. You know? I knew I was gone. I knew. Just with all their faces and so on. And then, and plus two, I was on death row. So they're coming up with that bullshit saying that I was on death row, whatever. But then the next episode, they're saying that I was the best, most faithful, faithful. So it's just, again, it's just like people forget. They thought I was a traitor and said whatever. Then the next day, because I mentioned Koozie's name and, and, and called it out. And I challenged her in a sense. And, you know, and. 
And I didn't really, I didn't get into an argument with her, with, with Koozie. I just said, don't call me honey, don't whatever, because I just didn't want to be, also too, I didn't want to be two angry black women at the round table either. So that's another reason there's some intersectionalities with some of the choices I made. I just didn't want us to be arguing. So I held back. So when she was getting mad, I just said, yeah, Koozie said her name. I'm not going to prove it. I don't have to. I'm too tired after the barrel. I'm tired. I'm old. I'm hungry. I just want to be done and let me be out of here because you guys are going to do whatever. So anyways, and then it was all emotional for them after the fact because they knew, right? So it is what it is. What's, but I mean, it is an emotional for time. All these, for, all these future, get you for all these future trader players there, what's the one piece of advice you would give as what is the best thing to do for their game when they're there? What is something that you only know because you've been there and you experienced it that oh, you were like, okay, this is what you do when you're there. What's what's one piece, Mel? I would have been closer more with the traders because I was getting like, I was good friends with Mike a little bit. So I think that saved me a bit. And I was chilling with Koozie, but I should have been a little bit closer. And I could have basically started throwing my, the people that I know faithfuls under the bus and let them basically take my butt all the way to the end and then find ways to get to basically you know, not, you know, the flame, the fire of truth, whatever, and do it that way. Mal I feel like I should have, like, that, that's what I had. I should have done that. And I think with me, I should have basically, in this game, I was just a tired. I knew I was going to be gone, right? So I might as well just call the name. I knew I was gone. But if I knew I wasn't going to be gone, then I would have focused, to be honest, is I know people suspected Trevon. I know people suspected Donna and Mike. I should have just basically followed that lead. But then I was on death row. I knew I was gone, so I just said, let's, let's get koozie. And then the next day, they actually listened to me. So it is what it is. So I left my yeah. mark in the game, right? I, got, I, got, I, left my, I didn't want my death to go in vain. <laughs> my panic I'll tell you, to go in we vain. see the game very similar, you and I. Um, I've said the exact same thing if I ever did play. Um, yeah. Yeah, 100%. That is uh, very, very good. I, that's how I see it, too. I see it very, very similar. Dom, give me your best p piece of advice. And don't you dare say make it a team sport because I don't want to hear that. What is your one piece of advice to give to these future players? Uh, one thing they need to know. From what Go. standpoint? From what standpoint? Just Being a trader you or have One piece of advice. Just the best piece of advice you can give to them. Don't get kicked off next. Uh, no, don't, no. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen ever again. But uh, I would say listen more than talk. That's it. Very simple. Very simple. Listen more than you talk. Mm -hmm. The more that you talk, the more you put yourself in your grave. The less that you talk the less people talk about you. And essentially, if you're on a faithful uh, faithful side, you just want to sneakily move your way through the game. And then if you got to throw some of your teammates under the bus, you got to do what you got to do, which obviously that happened with Rick for me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, listen more than you talk. And honestly, don't say too much. That's going to come back to haunt you. Like, for instance, Colin, it happened to him and it happened to many others out there. So... All right, last question. Okay, I'll start with Mel. Best player and worst player of this cast. Go. The best player? Yeah. So far, I mean, I, I know say... we're only on episode two. It's very, very hard to see. I mean, there's players we haven't even seen um, yet, so it's hard. But the, the player that I feel will do well for a bit would be Lauren. Lauren will do well. Um, I think the worst player is – I can't really – well, hard. I'm going to say – it's hard to say whatever. Like, I feel like I still need to get to know. I think my right. third or fourth episode, but I like how Lauren's playing the game. She's being active. She put herself on death row. So I think that scared her a little bit. That put that, that probably gave her fuel, a little bit of fuel to like now to actually play the game and be mindful that she was almost like she was regretting putting herself volunteering to be part of the mm -hmm. death row five. So I felt that that part for her making that decision will change the way she's thinking for this game hopefully for thinking for herself. But other than that, I think everyone's doing the best with what they can with the tools that they have and the knowledge that they have. They're doing a great job considering. It's, it like, it's very, very hard. We're on episode two. I still don't even know half the names. It's, it's hard. It's hard. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think we, for, oh, we didn't say worse. You didn't say the worst of them. I don't really have anyone uh, to say the worst because everybody's worse because someone's, I don't know. I can't really say. I can't. I don't I'm going like, to say it right now. Cedric, saying. Michael, Duds. And I say it with all due respect. Love the dud word. You I love say it with the all due word. respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does. But Dom, you know, but the thing is, I think Cedric is also too. But yeah, but then now, like they already mentioned, they're going to keep him long enough. True. And and then so you know, I mean, if he works better with, if it works a little bit more with other people, and and kind of like stays back a little bit, I think that will work for him. Do you know what I mean? But I think Michael John, I think with all, his, I think he needs, I think he just needs to check his gestures and how he interacts with people. 
Yeah, another, another take I always say, too, I feel like the worse you are, and I could be wrong here. This is my opinion on it. I feel like the worse you are, the better you, you do, the better you, the farther you go. Yes. That's, yeah, yeah, that's my opinion. They, they're, the traders are going to keep the worst players and protect exactly. them Exactly. It's a shield. That's their shield. 100%. That's their shield. 100%. Dom. The human shield. The human best shield. Best and worst. I, honestly, episode one, I gave Michael a little bit of a flame, the flame shrinking. Uh, in my eyes, he's probably gonna be blown out very shortly. So he's probably the worst player in my books. Best player is the ones that you're not seeing on TV right now. That's that's good take. They're yeah, hiding in the background. Yeah. They're not talking too much. They're not getting airtime, which means they're not doing much. They're playing the me game, and they're gonna get pretty far. We'll see if they can turn the tide though and give us a little bit more. But those are the people that are playing the best in my eyes that aren't getting much airtime. So all the I didn't get very much like airtime in the, the beginning. So my, I didn't I was... get very much airtime at the beginning either, though. I only have the little tidbits, but I started getting more airtime when I went on death row around episode four or five. Then that's where you got to see my voice. You just saw a little bit of, you know, comments here and there, but because I was under the radar because I know I have a loud voice and I have a big personality, but I let the other personality shine through. I just kept, it was reserved for a bit. It did come out. People did see me at the round table. I see you. For I me... see you. For me, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Nick, the brother, I think he's in the absolute best spot right now. One, because his oh, sister's yeah. a traitor and protecting him for sure. And without anybody knowing, like it, nobody knows they're, they're connected. Like if people knew they were brother and sister, there'd be a, more of a disadvantage. But the absolute right. fact that he has a traitor on one side, nobody's talking about it. You don't even see him on the TV. Uh, I, I think he's in the, by far the best position. It's not even close right now. Oh, from yeah. What, from what we get. Oh, yeah. Know? For TV, then, purposes, for TV purposes, I would somehow love for Michael to find out that that's Kira's brother, considering there's already controversy among the traders. That would make a nice heated conclave right there. Mm. So how would that happen? Or, or if it Corinne could comes in, no, no, because unless Corinne says, in the manor, there are two siblings that are whatever, related to one another. And then they can just then people to start to suspect. Like I mean, a little hand. And that's, yeah. and you know what? I wouldn't be I wouldn't even be mad at that because it gets people talking, it gets the suspense exactly. and the suspicions going around. That and, would be amazing. Yeah. And and it and it and lightens like, that crazy. twist. You know, it doesn't make mm -hmm. it so overpowered. I wouldn't be mad at that. Let them know there's someone that would in the be good. brother. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. I wouldn't be mad at that. That'd be cool. uh, I want to say this. Uh, you, Mel, you're in, Dom, you're always, I love Dom. I, me and Dom hang out every day. I always yep. bust his balls. He's great. Mel, you're amazing. I, it's a we, got, we got out of him tonight. He does not love me anymore. Oh it's God, me and God. Soldier now. Dom. Uh, is he going to be at your stag and dough? I no, told him I, to live stream it, and he said no. no. <laughs> My kid plays like, like very oh. competitive soccer. And, uh, oh, I he's get got it. No, I get it. Here. But I guess what? He named his son it. after me, Dominic. I did. Okay, I there you go. Him. My Aww. son is is ten, and I met Dominic. I don't know what um, a year ago, but uh, <laughs> but I did name him after Dom. I did. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you got well, a well, spot underneath you. that sweater. Yeah, with the awesome. sweater. Look, this well, is thank his you team. For See? Uh, but no, Mel, oh, okay. I, I want to say thank you. So, uh, honestly, you, you're you've been amazing, absolutely amazing. I love the way your brain works thank and you. your mind works, and you have that strategic view. I love that. I love chatting games like this with people that see it. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. You've been amazing. I'm definitely thank gonna you have you back me. on. Well, we what the hell you got me on here for then, Dom? You're you're awesome, dude. You're so great, and we uh, we love your smile. Oh, are you doing the cloak? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, That's, you got a cloak too? Oh, yeah. Am I the only one without a cloak? I got the cloak. There you go. What is this? Is I, what, am I, what is this? Am I the okay, only one without a cloak here? Yeah, you didn't you get the memo, off. Bruno. Apparently, man. Yeah. Apparently. But yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, Dom, I love you, man. You already know. Dom's a beauty. He's the one of the funniest he's people amazing. I know. He's he's great. I adore man. him. I he's do my too. brother hey. from another mother forever. I, I, I do hey, love Dom uh, with my whole soul. He drives me crazy. Hey, Mel, you should tell the people at home if there's anybody in London about the supporting the uh, breast cancer. Yes, let's hear it. Oh, Event. yes. Oh, yeah. So... I'm having, uh, I'm basically hosting and creating an event. It's called the Black and Pink Gala. And it is going to be my first one. It's going to be in London, Ontario. So it's only an hour away from the Hamilton crew. And um, it starts at seven. And we're going to have, like, I have five DJs. There's Caribbean dishes, charcuterie. There's, like, all these different drinks. There's a photo booth. And it's just a night and then some raffles and so on. 
but the whole purpose is to raise funds and the proceeds will go to creating self-care packages for women who were either recently diagnosed, currently going through treatment and are just finished treatment and just trying to figure their shit out because it takes a while. Like you can go finish your treatment, but the toll on your body and mind takes a while. And uh, the whole purpose is that I want to be in the trenches and I know, want to know where where money's going to. I just didn't want to be in, you know, in corporations that it just goes to administrative fees. I want to give it to the people, mm -hmm. be there for the people, been there, and just a way to support women in the Ontario community or throughout Canada. So it's a great cause. It's something different. I just didn't want to do, uh, you know, a breast cancer run. I don't want to do no marathon or run outside. I, I have enough junk in the trunk and I'm too old for that shit. So I'd rather just dance and have a good time with my girls and the guys and just do some throwbacks. And it's supposed to be, a, it's going to be a great night. And uh, yeah, definitely check it out. It's on Eventbrite and follow me on LA and you get some details, but something different and isn't for our age group because what's happening, people in their 35 and up, now it's people like it's becoming prevalent for women with breast cancer. So we need to address it a lot sooner than later. It's not the stereotypical 55, 60 year old white woman, you know, having breast cancer. It's like the young white girls are getting it. The sisters are getting it. And uh and no, there's no research. So we just need to support one another um, in the community. So that's what I'm doing. Black and pink gala. Amazing. Nice. London, Ontario. Absolutely amazing. Guys, uh, please. Start. I'm going to put links in the chat. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to upload this on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube now, there's going to be links below. Make sure you click them. Check them out. Uh, Mel, you're Thank amazing. You. Absolutely amazing. Uh, like, I am you. blown away right now. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I wish we still Thank had a you. Big Brother Canada. I would absolutely... I would send uh, her name right to the producer. Be like, you gotta check. You gotta check her out. You gotta check her out. Oh, thank what you. What is going on here? Hey. Tom, I'm sorry. I, 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 sorry. My mic, my earpiece isn't working anymore. I what? Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, it was Mel. You're awesome. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, this was Bob, lovely. Coming. We're gonna have you're welcome, you again. my dear. Like a hundred percent. Like anytime, anytime. I'm there. Anytime, anytime. Yeah. So yeah, uh, make sure you follow her socials as well, guys. Everything, uh, Mel, uh, Instagram, Twitter. What is it? I gotta check you out too. What is it? What is it? Talk I to just, you. um, I just really, I don't do Twitter. So I just basically Facebook is Melissa Alder, and then on Instagram and TikTok is I think it's I think I changed it. It's like Mel A doing her thing. Yeah, just doing my thing. Just doing right. shit. After when oh. you go through some shit, you just gotta do things for yourself and help others along the way. I love her, man. I love her. Thank you so much. And Dom, yes, yeah, sorry, Dom, I love you too. I, never love you too, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened here, but I got thrown in the background. I'm where's my, my where's my hug, out. Dom? Uh, Dom you, was Dom. coming in hard in Saturday. the chat earlier. He was coming in all like uh, wild. So, oh. uh, but uh, again, guys, so thank you so much for coming on. Thank Mel. you. A hundred percent. I'm gonna reach out. We're gonna we're gonna chat. Okay. All right. Got it. I appreciate all right. that. Dom. Take care, beauty. my friends. Yes. Take care, guys. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank we're out of here. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Dom. Bye. You guys have been amazing. Bye. 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 Bye.